Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I am the Sarcastic Barman and welcome to my channel. Well, we've had some fun with anti-vaxxers, flat earthers, dinosaurs are fakers, and general fucking idiots. But we haven't really touched on evolution properly, so I thought, hell, why not? So we scoured the internet, it, it took us about two whole minutes, and we found five scientific facts why evolution is false. Oh... Dear me, you know how well this is going to go. So, let's have a look, shall we? There are scientific facts to prove the theory of evolution is false. Oh, fuck my life. Can, can you audio balance, please? The music should not be as loud as the fucking voice. Even I know this shit. I've been doing this like, what, two and a bit months? Almost three months? Oh, fuck's sake. Right, we'll see if we can make this a bit better for you. The body and soul of Darwin's theory of evolution was the idea that evolution was made possible through natural selection. This concept is based on the suggestion that those members of a species that are a little stronger, a little larger, or run a little faster will live longer to procreate offspring with these superior adaptations. Well, that's a nice surprise. You got the basis of natural selection right. Let's see if this uh, continues, because that would be quite amusing. Darwin's theory suggests that millions of generations later the changes will result in new species. These adaptations are called links, or intermediates, between the old species and the new. Yep, these changes passed on over millions and millions and millions of years, down multiple generations over time, result in changes that result in new species. So, yeah, you're spot on. You've, you've read it right. Now, let's see the train wreck that's about to unfold. One of the best examples of evolution nonsense is the thought that a wingless bird began to evolve a wing. A wingless bird. You mean a dinosaur. A dinosaur started to evolve something that would later evolve into a wing. It didn't just go, look, here's a wing. Ha ha! And it didn't just go, I think I'll grow a wing. A wing might help my future children. So the original structure of the wing would have been some, for something completely different. It could have been to help radiate heat because we knew they started to have feathers and downy sort of hairy things. So it could be as an expansion of the arms to help radiate heat. This then may have had a byproduct of, hey, look, I can glide a little bit, which means I can jump better from that tree that I live in to this tree that I live in because not all of them will have lived on the ground. Uh, let's, let's just keep going and see how you fuck this up even more. Why this would occur is not answered by evolutionists. The wing stuff did not make the bird more adaptable to his environment. You, you know about 10 seconds ago when we sort of mentioned that the wing stub probably wasn't a wing stub to start with? Uh, Whatever. The first wing stubs would be much too small for the bird to fly. Why would a bird evolve wing stubs that are useless? This is backwards from the evolutionary theory of natural selection. Well, actually it's perfect theory for natural evolution. Oh, for God's sake, you, you, let, let's just go back. You have bird. That is not a bird because it's a fucking dinosaur to start with. That just happens to have feathers. Maybe the better arms help radiate heat. I'm sure I'm fucking repeating myself here. The end goal of evolution isn't to make the best animal in the entire universe with this is the animal we're going to be. We will aim to be that animal. We're going to be a bird and a condor that can glide forever. No, we're going to be the best that will survive in the fucking area we're in. And that might have meant better heat radiation, smaller under legs once they started climbing the trees more, the less climbing of the trees because now they could glide from one to the other so they didn't have to climb up as much. Little steps but with no end goal. I fucking hate these videos. Ugh. Which states that birds adapt and change in order to survive better in their environment. The bird with a half size wing is placed at a disadvantage in its environment. Why would the bird 
continue for millions of generations, to improve a winged stub that is useless. The theory of evolution, is based on natural selection, of the most adaptable member of a species, not the weakest. A bird with a useless wing, is at a severe disadvantage. This is the opposite, of natural selection. Ah, thank God that's the end of fucking birds. Right, let's just reiterate something. The wing did not need to start evolution as the goal of being a fucking wing. It could have been, as I said, heat radiation. It could have been the club claws on the end that spun out further, helped it pull itself up out of a hole it might have lifted. It could have been fucking anything. The fact that it later became a wing is a bonus for that animal and helped it in its best environment. It doesn't mean that evolution set out as you're going to grow a wing over the next million years. No! Because that would be fucking ridiculous. That would involve someone saying, this one needs to have a wing. Let's alter that, shall we? No. Just no. What? What's your next piece of crap? Giant dinosaurs literally exploded onto the scene during the Triassic period. The fossil record, petrified bones found in the ground, as at the Dinosaur National Park, in Jensen, Utah, USA, shows no intermediate, or transitional species. Really? Are you sure about that? Did, did you not bother to look uh, at the family of these dinosaurs and see how their lineage went back? I'm guessing you didn't, and see that they slowly got bigger and bigger over time. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing if we could uh, look at that and say, well, this animal led to this animal, which led to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, so we got to, like, to the big ones like Diplodocus and things like that. But no, I think you're going to miss that. It'd be wonderful if we had uh, some sort of chart, like, oh, what's this? And this is why you're a fucking moron. But let's keep going. Where are the millions of years of fossils showing the transitional forms for dinosaurs? They do not not exist because the dinosaurs did not evolve. Books published by evolutionists have shown the giant Cediosaurus dinosaur with the long neck extending upright, eating from the treetops. They claimed natural selection was the reason Cediosaurus had a long neck. Wouldn't it be really cool if there was an animal that lived today that we could trace back its evolutionary path and know that maybe three, four hundred thousand years ago didn't have a long neck. And we know that over time it's evolved this long neck to eat leaves off the top of trees. Um, that, that would be something wonderful. It'd help enforce the ideas that we have for the other animals and go, yes, look, we can see the similarities in these two animals' evolutionary paths. The taking of the leaves higher up and we know that they started with necks that didn't allow them to do this. I mean, we'd, we'd have to think of a name for this animal, maybe a, a long neeky or a neckus longus something or a, ooh, what about, ooh, just a ballpark name, a giraffe. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yes, a giraffe. An animal that lives nowadays that eats leaves from the top of trees. Oh, shit. I saw some of them at a zoo. Oh, bollocks. Never mind. This gave them an advantage in reaching fodder that other species could not reach. One day, during the assembly of a skeleton for a museum display, someone noticed the neck vertebrae were such that the neck could not be lifted higher than stretched horizontally in front of them. The natural selection theory was proven to be a big lie. Who? Who is this somebody? Where is the evidence for this somebody? Because I had a search through Google and I had a typed in Ceterosaurus. Uh, nothing. With no, nothing in regards to neck not bending, vertebrae don't work. So Unless you can provide some sort of credible source for this, I'm just going to say you're a fucking liar. Because, let's be fair, you probably are. Or you're a fucking moron. The Cediosaurus dinosaur was an undergrowth eater. The long neck actually placed the Cediosaurus 
at a disadvantage in his environment, just the opposite from the natural theory of natural selection. So, what we're all trying to get at here then is Ceteosaurus can't bend its neck up, was shit at how it lived, because God designed it like that and fucked up. Or, you're a liar getting things wrong and evolution is true. Okay, okay, let's let's move on to your next point then. Evolutionists line up pictures of similar looking species and claim they evolved one from another. The human family tree is an example of this flawed theory. Petrified skulls and bones exist from hundreds of species of extinct monkeys and apes. Evolutionists line up the most promising choices to present a gradual progression from monkey to modern man. They simply fill in the big gaps with make-believe creatures to fit the picture. This procedure can be done with humans only because there are many extinct monkey and ape species. They never do this with giraffes, elephants or the platypus. No. No, 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 no. Fucking no. We don't just do this for humans, do we? You're just more interested in it because you don't want there to be evolution from fucking apes. Or proto-apes. Whatever you want to look at it as. Ugh, God's sake. The, I will never do this fucking justice, but I have something that will. A far more logical explanation is the undisprovable science of creaturism. All life was created in its present form 7,000 years ago by a fantastical creature from outer space! Punk! Oh! If your elitist East Coast evolution is real, why has no one found the missing link between modern humans and ancient apes? We did find it! It's called Homo erectus! Then you have proven my case, sir! For no one has found the link between apes and this Homo erectus! Yes, they have! It's called Homo habilis! Aha! But no one has found the missing link between ape and the so-called Homo habilis. Yes, they have! It's called Australopithecus africanus! Ho oh, ho! I've got you now! Fair enough. But where, then, is the missing link between apes and this Darwinius massili? Answer me that, Professor! Bull. Okay, granted that one missing link is still missing. But just because we haven't found it doesn't mean it doesn't exist! Pshaw! Things don't exist simply because you believe in them. Thus saith the almighty creature in the sky! Why do they claim the above discovery is close to the missing link? The answer is simple. Look at the picture. It is a monkey. A monkey species that has become extinct. Lots of species have become extinct. Millions of species have become extinct. A newly discovered extinct species does not prove a missing link has been found. Uh, well, at least you got something right. Finding an extinct species does not mean it's a missing link. That is correct. It could be an offshoot that didn't evolve any further. It could be an offshoot of an offshoot. Who knows? This is the thing that scientists then go and find out. Whether and where this fits in with our evolutionary path. So... Yeah, if we find a missing link that's got the hip bones that are very similar to an ape but shows it walk more upright, so that sort of slight in-between step, that could be a missing link. But it might not be. They all have to fit in together with what we have now and what new discoveries we have. Hence why we have revisions in textbooks like, oh, we found this, this fits better with this, this slightly changes our idea of this. Ugh. Right, let's keep going. Charles Darwin admitted that fossils of the transitional links between species would have to be found in order to prove his theory of evolution. Well, these transitional links have never been found. We only find individual species. Evolutionists try to form these individual species into a link according to similar major features, such as wings or four legs but this simply proves the theory of evolution to be a fraud. 
So, in your odd world view, what is an evolutionary species? So, that is the big question you've got here. If you don't think these species that bear similarities but died out aren't humans, but then we have no human fossils from the time, only this gradual progression from species A to ourselves, with lots and lots and lots of steps in between, why aren't they transitional fossils? Darwin was hopeful that future fossils would prove his theory correct, but instead, the lack of transitional links has proven his theory to be wrong. The presence of individual species actually proves they were not developed by an evolutionary process. If evolution were true, all plants, animals, and insects would be in a continual state of change. No two creatures would be identical, because they would not be separate species. Ugh, oh, for fuck's sake, now you're just being fucking moronically moronically moronic for the sake of being fucking moronically moronic moronic. Ugh, all species and animals and plants, everything, is in a state of change. We are all always evolving. There is no end goal to evolution. It will continuously happen for the rest of time. No species is perfect for its surroundings ever, because its prey might change, its habitat might change. Everything is always changing. The way you seem to think about it is, oh, this baby must be exactly different from this baby. No, these changes take generations upon generations to manifest into changes we would even see, let alone to change from one species to another. Ugh. You're just a fucking lying moronic liar at this point. Because this is stuff that's been shown, talked about, and proven many a many a time. All life forms would be a continual blend of characteristics, without a clear definition among the species. Everything would be changing, and every animal, insect, and plant would be different. God damn, I'm glad this point's over. But fuck's sake, right. Let's just show and talk about this very quickly. Evolution takes place over hundreds of thousands to millions of years. To see these things in action, you would have to live for fucking ever. Luckily, we can see some things happen in laboratories. We can use animals with very short lifespans, like fruit flies. And we can see the changes based on their surroundings, if we change the environment and the food. Ugh. All right, let, let's just keep going, because you're just... Oh. Oh, we're going to have to leave this here for now. This is the end of part one. Tune in for part two.